Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working through problem 1.4 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. It says, use the cross product to find the components of the unit vector n hat perpendicular to the shaded plane in figure 1.11. So here's the figure in question. As we can see, it's an oblique plane crossing the x-axis at 1, the y-axis at 2, and the z-axis at 3. And the normal vector n hat is labelled there. So I've reproduced figure 1.11 here with the normal vector n hat in red. And we want to find an, a vector expression for this n hat. So the first step would be to define vectors that travel from the origin to each of the three vertices. But let's start with A. We'll say points from the origin to this vertex here crossing the x-axis of 1. So that means we could write A in column vector form as 1, 0, 0. B pointing along the y-axis. So we can write B as 0, 2, 0. And C pointing up the z-axis. So we can write C as 0, 0, 3. Now this next part is slightly more tricky, but we need to find expressions for vectors that exist on the surface of this oblique plane. So there's a few ways we could do this, but let's imagine we wanted to travel from this point here at the x-axis at 1 to the point 3 on the z-axis. We'd have to travel backwards along A and up C. So we'd have minus the vector A plus the vector C. And we can simplify this writing it as C minus A. And this vector would exist on the surface of the plane. So what we're actually going to do is define this as a new vector D. And then work it out using these column vectors. So the vector d could be written as 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 0 minus 0 is 0, and 3 minus 0 is 3. So now, in a similar way, if we wanted to travel from this point, at 1 on the x-axis to this point at 2 on the y-axis. If we wanted a vector expression for this, we would go backwards along A and forwards along B. So we would have minus A plus B equivalently B minus A. And let's define this as a new vector E that also exi exists on this plane. And then using the column vectors above, we can say that E is equal to 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 0 minus 0 is 0. So now we've got our two vectors, D and E. So now we have two vectors that exist on the surface of this plane. And we'll just label them on the, the diagram here. So this is the vector E. And this is the vector D. 
Now the question tells us to use the cross product. And looking at these vectors here, we can see that the cross product of E and D would be pointing outwards parallel to this unit normal vector. So for now, I'll write the cross product of E and D as capital N because it's yet to be normalized and I've actually drawn in the vector capital N parallel to N hat just to visualize it. So now we can work this out as we normally would using the determinant. We'll start with the basis vectors in the first row x hat, y hat, and z hat. And the vector e, so we have minus 1, 2, 0. And the vector d, minus 1, 0, 3. This is quite straightforward, and it works out as 6 x hat, and we have the minus sign in front of the y coefficient, so we have minus minus 3, which is plus 3, y hat, and then finally, so the last step to find the unit normal vector n hat is to divide normal vector capital N by its magnitude. That's how unit vectors are defined. So first we work out the magnitude of the normal vector N, capital N. And this is just the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared. works out as 36 plus 9, 45 plus 4 is 49, so it's the square root of that is 7. So now we can write n hat as 1 over 7 times 6 x hat plus 3 y hat plus to z hat. So yeah, there you go. We have found an expression for this unit normal vector in red. And there it is. Thank you for watching the video and feel free to subscribe for more videos like this.